Well, from an England point of view, I'm not sure it was worth getting up at three in the morning here in Australia to watch that game. But from a Scotland point of view, you will not care what time of the day it is because once again, Scotland have beaten England to retain the Cal Cutter Cup. Welcome back to the channel. The first time since 19th century, the Scotland have won four Six Nations games in a row against England. They have turned this rivalry on its head. It was not long ago that England seemed to win it all the time and now they can't buy a win against the Scots. So let me know, England fans, Scotland fans, I think quite an interesting game, quite interesting performances to try and unpack in this video. So do comment and let me know what you made of it on where your side is, whether you're a Scotland fan, an England fan or, or just a neutral. If you want to have your say, then the comment section is where you can do that. And make sure you like the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well. But as I say, welcome back. An entertaining Calcutta Cup, actually. I say at the top of the video, not great from an England perspective. I thought it was an entertaining game and a funny game because errors from both sides throughout various points of the contest, so many handling errors. We'll come on to that in particular, I think, from an England point of view. But I wondered, as a kind of top line from this game, whether it was a bit of a continuation of what we have seen from these sides already. If you look at it from a Scotland point of view, some brilliant stuff in there. Also that slight bip, th blip, sorry, this time at the start of the game rather than at the end of the game as we saw against Wales and against France, or second half in those matches really. This time that blip came at the start of the match, but we've also seen some of the great stuff that they're able to do. Duan van der Merwe absolutely tearing England to shreds as he's done previously. And from an England point of view, it's kind of a continuation of what we've seen from them in this Six Nations. Some good stuff in very small glimpses you can see what they are trying to do, but are they improving quick enough? Would probably be my big question mark over England and Steve Borthwick and those coaches off the back of this game. And I think there's gonna be loads of England fans in the comments who are hugely frustrated, understandably so, and I will get on to England, but it's only fair that we start with Scotland. Because frankly, the first quarter of that game, Scotland were not very good. It took them until the 19th minute to score their first points in this game. England put them under pressure. They were able to retain the ball. Scotland were pretty sloppy themselves. I talk about errors. Scotland were dropping the ball. In part, that was down because of what England were doing. That blitz defence did seem to work early on in the game. So Scotland did not look good at all early. And you were looking at it, or I was looking at it, and thinking last time out, gutting to not get the victory over the French. Are they just having a slight slip, this Scotland team? But they deserve huge credit for the way in which they responded in this game. Given that it took them the best part of the first quarter to get any points on the board, after that they dominated England, scored some great tries, and were just all round the better side, which you wouldn't have necessarily thought if you only saw that first 15 minutes. And I think what will please Gregor Townsend the most is the way in which this Scotland side were able to problem solve. Given that they came into the game and they weren't playing well, their opposition were able to dictate the game. England silenced that Murrayfield crowd in that first 15 minutes, went 10-0 up. The way in which Scotland could problem solve to get themselves back in the game, the way in which they could respond, I think is what Gregor Townsend is going to be absolutely buzzing about. Duan van der Merwe I mentioned as well. I've got to give him another mention. A hat-trick against England to go off the back of the two brilliant tries he scored in the Calcutta Cup last year. A hat-trick here. I mean, he's just one of those wingers, isn't he? That He can have quite quiet games, van der Merwe. But if you give him space, if you give him time, he's so quick, he's so powerful. He can cut you to ribbons. And England have found that out the tough way once again, really. But I suppose for... Whilst on the one hand... You give Scotland a huge amount of credit for the way they got back into the game. From an England perspective, and I suppose I'm always going to have a slight English bias to, to my reviews, they also allowed Scotland that opportunity. Because England had a great start, as I say, and it's that great start that for me makes what happened all the more frustrating. And what happened in the rest of the match just so exasperating from an England point of view because if you think of that first 15 minutes and England's performance being up here, the attack looking good, the defence causing errors from, a Scotland, from that Scotland um, attack, if you think about England's performance being up here at the start of the 80, it was down here by the bottom of the 80 or the end of the 80. 
And that was best exhibited really by Ollie Lawrence, that loopy pass towards the end. He wasn't the only one, it bounced out into touch. There were so many errors like that. Furbank had an offload in the second half that he thought if it could have gone to hand, then maybe England might have been away. It bounced out into touch. They were dropping balls all over the place. It was such a sloppy performance after looking so on it in the opening 10 minutes. And that opening 10 minutes, I'm looking at England and you're thinking, this is the team England want to be. As I say, blitz defence, whilst it's always a risk and whilst it wasn't perfect, forced errors from Scotland. They got turnover ball. They were playing most of the rugby in the Scotland half of the field. They score a first phase try where they cut through. George Furbank goes over after being the controversial selection before the game. And you're looking at it and you're thinking, this is what this England team want to be. And then handling errors, 11 handling errors was it in the first half, a lack of accuracy, turnover ball, Scotland pounced, and they cut England apart. And I think it displayed both where this England team wants to be, but also the shortcomings of this England team at this moment in time. Turnovers and unstructured play completely cut, cost them. They got cut open, and from an attacking point of view, it just feels like it's baby steps at the moment. Because once again, I talk about that try they scored at the start with Furbank, which was a brilliant start, and you were hoping that the attack and the possession they were having in the opening period were going to, was going to be able to, to lead to even more points. And it just didn't. Multiple trips into the 22, multiple phases. They had the territory, they had the possession, their red zone efficiency once again was really poor in comparison to Scotland, who were lethally efficient in the 22. They made England pay for pretty much every trip they got into that 22 in the early part of that game, whereas England were the absolute opposite. They couldn't capitalise on it other than that first try that they scored. So it does feel like it's the shortcomings of this team. And I suppose one of my big concerns is, look, we know England are in transition to a degree. They're trying to develop in their attack and their defence, and we've all given them quite a lot of leeway for that. I think that will start to waver after this game, in particular with Ireland and France to come, because England now are staring down the barrel of a Six Nations, where once again, quite conceivably, it could be just the two wins against Wales and Italy. All of that stuff is, is going to start buzzing around and the noise around the team. But my big concern watching that game was I was looking at that second half and I was looking at England needing to chase the game. And I just felt that where this England team are at the moment, if you don't commit penalties in defence, they're not going to put you under enough pressure. They're not going to... If you can just hold them, eventually they'll cough the ball up. Their attack isn't lethal enough. So if you can be disciplined they're not going to be able to hurt you over the course of the game. Particularly when you look at the fact that they've got Ireland next at Twickenham, Ireland the team whose discipline has been brilliant to start this Six Nations. That, I think, is a worry of how England can build pressure on teams. I don't think you would be fearful of facing this England team. So England, where do they go from here? From a Scotland point of view, the result of this game for both teams was always going to have a huge say on the narrative of where their championship is. For Scotland now, it's about getting themselves to that final weekend, isn't it? In the hope that they can pull off a huge upset against Ireland, which is a long shot based upon how good and the sort of team Ireland looked like. But had they lost this game, two defeats, you'd have thought their Six Nations was over. So credit to Scotland for rebounding from that France game for showing the character and the decision-making to get themselves back into the game and to be able to capitalise on the litany of England errors that were coughed up and being able to correct their own game. So there was loads of errors from Scotland in the first 15 minutes as well to be able to eliminate some of those. Those are my kind of on-the-whistle thoughts. Comment down below, what do you make of it? Scotland fans, England fans, how do you assess that performance and where these teams are off the back of it? I look forward to reading your comments. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.